Hey everyone, Tony from TN3 Studio and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at how to create realistic skies with the new V-Ray 6 for SketchUp. Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Very exciting news from the Chaos team. They just released V-Ray 6 for SketchUp, packed with a lot of new tools, features and improvements. And one of those new features is Procedural Cloud, which was added to the V-Ray Sun and Sky system. So in this video, we're breaking down the settings and we'll try to create some realistic skies for our project. Before we continue, if you like what you see on the channel or if you're new, gently give this video a thumbs up, subscribe and hit that bell notification. This helps with the growth of the channel and so you don't miss the next time we cover a V-Ray 6 feature. So this is a very nice addition in my opinion and it really helps to complete the V-Ray Sun and Sky system. So ultimately, the procedural clouds will help you to create more realistic skies without the use of HDRI. So let's get started by taking a look at the settings. You want to open your asset editor, go to the light tab, expand the sunlight settings and here is where you can enable the cloud settings. Now the preview window does a pretty good job to test each of these parameters. As you can see, it is very responsive once I adjust a few of these settings. But let's activate the interactive render, see how fast they render and how realistic our sky will look. Now the very first setting is density. This controls the density of the clouds or rather the amount of clouds you see in the sky. So as you can see a value of zero here, I have a very clear and clean sky. And as I increase gradually, you can see low level clouds that begin to form. And ultimately at a maximum value, the sky should be completely covered up with clouds. Next, we have variety. This controls the variety of clouds in space and shape. So ultimately, this parameter helps you to differentiate different types of clouds. So as you can see, these are some examples with a density value of 0.5 and different variety values. Cirrus amount controls the amount of high altitude cirrus clouds. These are usually the clouds that sit above 20,000 feet from surface level. And you can see when you have both low and high altitude clouds, it adds a very realistic depth to your sky. Next we have height. This value controls the height of the clouds in meter, the lowest value being 500 meters. So here are a couple of examples with clouds at different height levels. As for thickness, this controls the thickness of the clouds in meter and ultimately this setting helps you to create thin looking and thick looking clouds. And once again, it's a combination of all of these settings that will let you create variety of clouds and add that extra layer of realism in your sky. Next we have offset X and Y. And this controls the movement of the clouds in the X and Y direction. And you want to think of this as the movement caused by wind. So as you adjust the X parameter, you can see that there's a uniform movement of the clouds moving side to side. As for the Y parameter, there's a uniform movement of the clouds moving front and back. Now, unlike the offset, phase X and Y helps to create movement in the cloud formation, which gives the illusion of the clouds appearing and disappearing. So if we take a closer look, you can see that there's a slight movement on the cloud itself as I adjust the parameter. Now a very important note is that the formation movement loops every 100%. So values like 0, 100, 
200 and so forth will produce identical results. Next we have ground shadows. This enables the shadows caused by the clouds when it's hit by light. So if we enable this setting and zoom out far enough, you'll be able to see the clouds shadow cast on the ground. Note that it's also recommended to use a dome light here if you want high quality shadows. And the way to set that up, you need to have a dome light set in your scene. Next, you want to copy your environment texture and paste it in the dome light texture slot. As a last step, you want to disable the sky in the environment settings so there's no interference between the two. So as you can see from this comparison, this is going to give you higher quality shadows and at the same time, it seems to render just a little bit faster. Now the next four settings are focused around animations. So if you want to create cloud animations like this, these are the settings you want to adjust. First, we have dynamic clouds, which controls the automatic cloud formation movements. And ultimately there are unique offset and phase values that are used based on the current time of day. You also have settings like wind direction, obviously controls which degree the clouds move to. Wind speed controls the cloud movement in meters per second and phase velocity which specifies the phase change measured in percent of cycle per second. So hopefully that explanation made a bit of sense and I promise these settings get easier the more you practice but let's give it a try in creating some realistic skies. So here are some examples that I've gathered. I wanted to collect different sky that fit specific scenarios. And we're going to try to tweak these settings and see if we can come close to the reference images. So this is our first reference, a very clear sky with some clouds. This is also a very typical request for most clients. They want something that is simple, that don't get too much attention and it's pleasing to look at. And this is my result. The sun orientation is based on the scene. So it's positioned intentionally to work for this example. I'm working with the PRG clear sky and as for our cloud settings, we have the density at 0.5, variety at 0.35, no serious amount, the height is about 1300 meters and thickness at about 2500. Now the other way to make this a little bit more interesting is to simply add some serious amount and we can take our sky from this to this. Our next example is going to be an overcast sky. Usually this is a sky that is completely covered by clouds and not too much sunlight. So the environment is darker than usual. And this is my result. As for the settings, I use the CIE overcast sky model. As for the cloud settings, we have the density at 0.9, variety at 0.6, height at 820 and thickness at 3000. Once again, these are no magic numbers, it's a matter of trial and errors, so this is a very simple sky to create. Lastly, we have the golden hour sky, which happens just before sunset when the sun is low enough to cast soft and warm light. So you get this awesome display of golden light that is also absorbed by the clouds to create this type of scenario. And this is my result. As for the sun position, the vertical angle is at 1.9 degrees. And once you have that set, the rest of the settings are pretty simple. We have density at 0.5, variety at 0.8, series at 1, height at 600, and the thickness at 10 for some thin looking clouds. So this is really not bad for just adjusting a few parameters and if you want something a little more interesting, you can bring some thickness back to the clouds so you can take this sky all the way to this. And that's going to be all for this video. Let me know in the comment section what you think of the new procedural clouds and we're going to leave the cloud animations for its own separate video. And as a gift, if you're interested in the preset files, you can check the link in the description for our 3D stores. We'll have the files available for download. 
As always, don't forget to subscribe and follow us on other social media platforms. And I'll see you guys next time.